Hello people, mo kinye lo konrin lo birin, lo mo de ati mi agba eshe goni mo dupe. That was me saying thank you to you in my native dialect of Yoruba. Orukomini Adiola Sulaiman. And you are welcome to your favorite primetime television show, Ways. It is our season break special. And as we round off the year and mark our four years anniversary, I want to highlight why I love Ways and the impact it has had on me personally and on my journey into television by answering 10 personal questions about Ways and how it fits into my life. For me, I think the Ways show brings to the fore topical and societal issues, provides information and sparks dialogues that seeks to educate and empower people to make informed decisions and stay current on issues around the country and the world at large. My personal mission is to live an intentional life that is tipped in my abilities to learn, unlearn, and relearn. I am motivated and inspired to advocate for same. And one of the platforms that allows me to do this is via The Ways Show. We're able to have intentional conversations that are designed to spark action in people and help them make informed decisions that are fact-based and also to promote our individual and collective lives. My favorite moment on Ways has got to be um, the episode where we had, um, how can we get more women into seats of power in Nigeria? Now, um, if I have to talk about what my daily job looks like and what I love about it, I work as the program's lead at ProShare Foundation, now, Prussia Foundation operates within the financial literacy and innovation space, and I am excited about the work we do, which is advocating and promoting financial literacy around the country, using innovative ways to tell the financial literacy story. I am very passionate about financial inclusion projects, and we are involved with our stakeholders in bringing about opportunities to initiate conversations around financial exclusion and how we can move as a country forward. Every day, I see the impact we create, and I am proud to say that in helping people become more financially literate, we are aligned with the federal government and the UN Sustainable Development Goals to eradicate poverty, achieve zero hunger, promote gender equality, and so much more. I consider this a unique and privileged opportunity. What am I most proud about? Oh, certainly that would be myself. I mean, I think about the journey, my journey, and it is hard for me not to applaud myself if I look back to how far I have come. I am very proud of the fact that I seek daily to walk the path of transformation, giving myself the liberty to make mistakes and learn from it. But also, I take each moment to celebrate the wins and stay in the cause even when I have doubts creeping in. That's, that's not easy, but I mean... Hmm... I'm very afraid of losing faith, not making heaven as cliche as that sounds, not having enough time to spend with the people I love, and also not extending enough grace to those I meet in proportion to how much grace I have enjoyed from the Almighty and the people around me. This year has been a really tough one for me. I mean, so many things happened, but I will say this, that at the end of it all, hope spoke so much louder, louder than despair for me, and I am truly very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. 
if I were to be elected as a president for one day, my priority would be, I mean, Nigeria is, is a very complex um, nation and um, it's very hard to just say that I would do one thing. However, I think that um, I would seek to address the financial trajectory of this country. At the heart of um, financial wellness are the principles of make, manage, multiply and protect. And I think it's the same thing at national level. How do we make money as a nation? What do we need to do to ensure consistent inflow of money? Now, I think we would need to focus on building local capacities and industries to the point where we're a production nation as against just a consuming one. Second thing is how do we manage money? First, the cost of governance must be drastically reduced. Government expenditure must be evaluated to reflect economic situation, focus and promote maintenance strategies instead of wastage. How do we multiply money? It would be my job to foster economic growth by incentivizing entrepreneurship and ensuring an enabling environment for startups and small businesses, facilitating access to capital for businesses to expand, innovate and create more opportunities will be a definite way to increase local economies. I will also definitely promote financial literacy and investment education to empower individuals to make informed financial decisions, implement tax policies that incentivize long-term investments and wealth-building activities, which fosters a culture of responsible and sustainable financial growth. The last will be how do we protect our assets as a nation? I will diversify the economy to reduce dependency on a single sector, providing stability and protection against economic vulnerabilities. Mm. Now, I think that the media act as a catalyst for national transformation by informing, educating, influencing, advocating, and facilitating communication. It is very integral in shaping the narrative, fostering public engagement, and contributing to the overall success of national, of transformational initiatives. I love to read, I like to travel, I like listening to music, and definitely being around loved ones. My favorite show this year has got to be the episode with Tari Taylor, where we discussed how more women can get into the seats of power. We explored some of the prevailing issues women often faced going into the political space and vying for a position, the impact of culture, the inequality that arises from gender bias and other mitigating factors. We also discussed what strategies to employ moving forward to ensure more female representation in politics and governance. Now, in case you can't remember, watch this. Thanks for staying with us now. According to a news source, despite clamors for improvement in women participation in public life across the world, Nigeria appears to be moving in the wrong direction. Now, from 1999 to date, only 157 women have been elected into the 469 member National Assembly, 38 senators, and 119 members of the House of Representatives, um, compared to 2,657 men, with about six, um, 616 senators and 2,041 reps during the same period. Now, the results of the 24 5th uh, February presidential and national assembly elections have further exposed Nigeria's failure to implement several treaties and status it signed, which are aimed to ensuring women's involvement in politics. Now, of course, the 92 women who contested for the Senate in the February elections, only three women won. While out of the 286 who contested for the seats of the House of Representatives, only 15 have been declared winners. It is our responsibility as citizens to learn from our mistakes 
and make decisions that will be for the benefits of the larger good. And today we're asking, how can we get more women into seats of power? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 8 one 8038463. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. In one or two minutes, quickly, how do you think we can help women get into power more? Um, advo advocacy. We need to, I mean, get more women involved in politics and. A lot of times that involves financing, you know. We need to understand that there are roles to this thing, you know. So if you discover what your strength is, you must be able to say that I'm I'm giving this to you, you know. I'm lending you my strength. I can campaign with you, but I can donate resources. This one can't do this. I can, you know, come with my intellectual capacity, you know. So again, and then we need to be forgiving to mm. other women. Ah. Ah. <laughs> okay. I think, I think that's, that's, that's just what I was even going to say, actually. Mm. So I think people, we women need to support yeah. each other. And then, you know, we're just discussing how the standard is always, the bar is always raised when you see a woman coming mm. into a, a, a place of leadership, you know. Yeah. You then, you don't now say, oh, when it's a man, it's like, okay, it's normal. Whatever he does, he does. But then when it's a woman, everybody says, I, I hope she will be able to do this. <laughs> I hope she will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Why? A woman is, she's a human being just exactly. as a man is, right? Mm. So I think we also, we need to recognize the untapped capacity of women in yeah, leadership, absolutely. actually. And absolutely. do you know how interesting these elections went? Mm. Do you know that the people that actually did, not only did they vote, mm. that stood to protect their votes, they were mostly no, women. But I mean, no honestly. Right. So imagine no if women had just come together and said, I don't want to care which party you belong. Mm. Mm -hmm. As long as you're a woman, I and am you here for you. Yeah. you are on this ballot, mm -hmm. I am here to, yeah. all the women would have entered yeah. the, Absolutely. I mean, they would have won their, their elections. Right. I think so. Because the real people that voted in this particular election mm -hmm. too, were women. No, but women are usually the powerhouse of electoral in, in elections. Mm. So you see them, that's why Yaoloja, Market mm. Women Association, they hold such strong political force. Mm. Because yes. you can't go and meet a man, or I mean, in, in that large number and say come out and vote. No. Mm. It is the women that will mobilize other women and say, listen, this, this is, is where we do our Yes, yes. So we just need to channel okay. that Okay, so let me bring in our guest. Terry Taylor is a media professional and a TV producer with vast experience serving clients in both the public and private sector. She is the vice chairman environment of Lekki Zone and is the environment secretary of Lekki Estate Residents Association. Terry Taylor is um, the duly nominated candidate of the youth party to represent Etiosa One at the State House of Assembly in the just concluded 2023 elections that happened on Saturday. She's also campaigning, on a, or she campaigned rather, on a clear strategy to transform the environment and create jobs for many, many unemployed youths in the um, constituency. <laughs> All these <laughs> political <laughs> terminologies. <laughs> but she's joined us live in studio. Thank you so much, Harry Taylor. First of all, let me ask you for the just concluded elections. Yeah. How was Saturday for you? Saturday was quite an interesting day for me. Um, I was ready, you know, for to participate in the elections. My team and I had my agents in all the polling units across, and we were basically good to go. But then we were watching out, you know, for when the materials come out and you know um <laughs> and then at that point we realized that my party had been excluded from oh. the ballot for house of assembly in etiosa one yes so that was my experience but still i mean it was a very busy day because like i said we already had all of our logistics in place so we had to still manage people manage all of our agents all around take care of welfare just still keep things going so that kept me busy all of saturday i still went to vote how did that um, keep how did that? So, um, how did that It had out? been an ongoing um, legal issue. issue with INEC, but on the 2nd of December 2022, mm. we had a judgment from the Supreme Court wow. in our favor mm. as a party saying INEC should allow us participate yeah. as we are a duly registered you know, political party. Meanwhile, mm. this is not my first time contesting. Mm. In 2021, at the local government elections, I was on the ballot on Youth Party. Mm. I ran for councillor of my ward. So I've been on the ballot before on this same platform, okay? And um, so when this happened, you know, 
we got the judgment on the 2nd of December. So he was like, okay, you know what? You don't really expect INEX to just completely ignore and disobey Supreme Court judgments. But well, turns out that's exactly what they did. And um, So are you planning to pursue, take any legal action or what's the plan? Uh, going forward, you yes. mean? Yes. I mean... So, I mean, since I've been running this campaign since May last year, mm -hmm. I declared in May, we did the primaries, we did the screening, so it's been a long stretch. I think I have done all that I know to do as a candidate. In, the, in spite of all that uncertainty and all of that, I, you know, I did the campaigning, I took it all upon myself, I expended everything that I did, and this was the outcome, which is fine. I mean, this is on INEC, they did this, mm -hmm. you know. However, I think... Um, if the party wants to follow it up, they should. But I wouldn't lead on that. I think I've done my part in the, in the whole process. Why do I feel so disappointed like. that <laughs> you are not pursuing it? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I hope it's pursued because, yes, why should they ignore a Supreme Court yes. judgment? But I won't lead on it. Mm. You know, I'm a candidate. I have yeah. run a, a strong campaign. Mm. I've done everything. I've done my groundwork. I've, you know, connected with my electoral base. I had people come out. So I had to spend all of Saturday doing damage control. Mm. Everybody who was supporting me, I had to send messages to them saying, this is what has happened, but please, you still need to go out and vote. And I made sure that I went out, you to know, vote. to vote. So imagine I took that House of Assembly, you know, uh, okay. paper. And I saw myself excluded, <laughs> but I voted because I wanted to let other people know that, look, it's, let's move yeah. on. This Regardless. has to happen, you know. So that was... Um, that was it, and yeah. So just let's still <laughs> just stay small on that to, um, subject of the Saturday election. Yeah. Well, I saw you put up a, a post on the um, what's it called, the tribal or religious yes. Yes. Um, bigotry. bigotry that went on on Saturday. You know, do you want to just you know probably say more about yes. that? I mean, when I found out that I had been excluded, it was terrible. It was I was disappointed and all of that but like I said I was busy so it was easy to manage that and just con carry on doing but what really broke my heart was this tribal bigotry mm. you know to just see that in I mean I have never experienced that before mm. you know what I mean like I've heard about tribal it, you profiling know that, yes. you know that it exists but I for the first time I actually saw the face of it I, mm. I you know what I mean like this is ugly yeah. I, I this is terrible I don't ever want this is not the Nigeria that I know or that I want to be you know I want to for us, for all of us. So I felt the need to, you know, reach out because I, I just imagine that if I was on the receiving end of all that hate, you know, you've lived somewhere all of your life, you have a sense of kinship with everybody there. We, I mean, we don't see, I don't, I don't see tribe. I've grew, and I've lived in Lagos all my life, really. I, and I don't see people on the basis of where they're from. Or I just see everybody, we're all Nigerians. But to see that division and to see people who you know, who you respect, who you, who are p everyday people like you, you know, propagate that, that hate to me, it was shocking. And I thought, you know what, no, we need to reach out to the people, you know, who have been directly affected by this. We need to, you know, sort of all just find a way to sort of heal from this because it really is bad. And the thing about it that even scared me the most was... We all, people talk about, you know, uh, separating, leaving Nigeria, they talk about Biafra, they talk about all of that. And I'm always, I've always been a very strong advocate for One Nigeria. I believe that, you know, One Nigeria is a non-negotiable. We should always find a way to hold together. But for the first time, I sort of understood where the argument comes was coming from. from. Yes, I totally understood it because I'm like, you know what, if I was on the receiving end of that, I would say... There's keep no point. Your, yes, like, keep your, keep your, keep yes, and let me go back. Yeah. Go. But I, I don't want us to all get there. We can't mm. afford to get there because we are better off together. together. Yeah. So the healing needs to start. It mm. needs to be, you know, it needs to be urgent. It needs to be strategic. We, and it's all hands on deck. Mm. Like we all have a responsibility to reach out. And to, I, and I think the, 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 the person I would pin this on is the CNC. What do they call? What do they call the person? Yeah, you know, you are you are the CNC in, in charge of the state. You know, a lot happened again. These people thought they were fighting your battle, mm -hmm. so that's why they were calling out. You know, and you know, calling a particular tribe. So if you truly want to heal from this, if you want, because again, you cannot ignore what this particular tribe have brought to your IGR. Exactly. Yes, you can't ignore it. Yeah. I'm sorry, you yeah. cannot. 
they actually are they, they, any anywhere they go to they drive the economy mm -hmm. they are that industrious so you can't just wake up mm -hmm. and because of politics ignore the kind of financial return that these people bring for you as a people mm. so but i mean we will take a very short break then we'll now focus on women's seats because we have short our time <laughs> stay with us we'll just go out and we'll be right back stay with us All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're having a conversation and we're asking how can we get more women in the seats of power? And we have a woman. She's been in political scene for a while and she's been contesting. You know, um, she ha she's here with us, you know, to, to discuss more about this, right? And um, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WaysShowAfrica. One with a hashtag we show. All right, so um, Terry, let's let's now move to the conversation around women. I mean, when the Adamora State um, elections it was going, everybody was so excited. Oh, what a Mother's Day gift, you know, and all of that. You know, even me, I took the picture that I'd seen online, I put it on my status. I felt very proud. I felt very like, okay, yes, you know, I can see somebody like me. You know, yeah. I mean, being a governor yeah. is a big deal, yes. right? And she ran a very tight race, right? Um, but when, of course, the, they broke my heart. <laughs> um, first of all, people were saying that, why were we congratulating her? We, we made it, you know, we jinxed, we, we jinxed it. Early, yeah, it was too early. Did, so yes, you know, it was did, too early yeah. that. And we were overhyping, we were over-celebrating her. People didn't understand what it was. Yes, that was a win for all women. Mm -hmm. But this issue around women in leadership, right? It's a big deal. I mean, Diola mentioned finance. Chinelo was talking about standards, how we put a lot of expectations when it's a woman that is running, but when it's a man, nobody's asking those kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. How do we truly get women, you know, more women to occupy seats of power? There's a law that says we must feel. 35%. 35 percent mm. we're not even following that and nobody's even questioning it mm. so how do we even start where do we start from if we really want to follow through and i like what you said about strategy because me i'm not about emotions anymore after this election they have opened <laughs> my eye to see that it's not about emotions yeah. we just need to be very strategic. strategic so how do we strategically get more women seated at um, um high levels of um, um power mm -hmm. So first of all, more women have to desire it. More women have to want that power and to be in those and to occupy those offices. So when you have more women wanting it and not just wanting it to be handed over to them, but wanting but willing to put in the work, you know, and go into political parties. You can you can't just sit here and wish wish yeah. yourself into office. You have to go into a political party, you have to be part of the political party system because our electoral act doesn't allow for independent candidates. Mm. So you have to be part of a political party for them to present you as a candidate. And that is a, you know, that is a race on mm. its own. You know, it's not, you're not just going to get up doing elections and say, I want to join a political party. If you want to be elected in 2027, you have to start the work. Join you know, the party now. now. Mm. You know, join the party, get, find, start it, the find work. yourself a role, mm -hmm. start to add value, start to volunteer. You know, let people know you, let people even within the party start to know you, start to trust you. So that when you now come out and say, oh, I want to, you know, buy the form for one position or the other, there will be people who will back you up. There will be delegates who are willing to vote for you. But if you just come out of nowhere and just expect that there will be some sort of, um, because you're a woman, you know, it will just be handed over to you, that is completely wrong. And that is why a lot of people in the parties will not even respect mm. a woman who will come up because they're like, why should we all just hand it over to you because they are doing 35%? No, you have to fight for it as well. So I think that it's a, it's a joint understanding. If the mm. political parties are more willing to put forward more women. So th they can now put in within their processes things that will allow for that you know, to happen. For example, maybe they would, in my party, um, when I was running, like running for House of Assembly now, um, so the form for 
the House of Assembly was a million naira, but because I'm a woman, I got it for 500,000. Mm -hmm. So that's a little incentive, you know, you can do with the forms. And I know that different parties do it. You Some even give for free. For you. But I, don't, I think you should pay for a mm -hmm. form. I think you should pay for a form. It, it's your own first investment mm -hmm. into your own to pay, pay for a form. I, mm -hmm. I, I would advise anyone to. I actually think so too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it's, it's your way of committing mm -hmm. and saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to take the money and I'm going to invest in this mm. so it's you committing to it and it shows your seriousness to be honest absolutely you, know, you would appreciate a form better when you have when bought you it, it. <laughs> that way they took it and give, give it, it to you you, yeah. you know yeah. so um more of those sort of incentives you know will allow women feel that okay if a campaign is not going to be too expensive i don't have to go and sell my house if, mm. if i'm going to get the funding to do it like you said you know it would encourage more people but first of all you have to come in and be willing to do the work be willing to come in and you know do the groundwork the back-end work not the glorious work that everybody will see but go and be the one that is arranging chairs mm. doing meetings nice, do you understand be the one to provide food to provide welfare when mm. people need let people know you and be able to vouch for you and say you know what this, because a lot of times, you know, people are actually, there's sometimes a bit of fear even towards women vying for yeah. these positions. Sure. That may, because of our, our society, that may be a, an instinctive, you know, reaction. People are afraid. But when you show people that there's nothing for you to be afraid of, I'm somebody you can trust. I'm somebody that you even want to mm. be in power like because power. you know that it will benefit, it will benefit you. You know what you I mean? Yeah. So yeah. once you can make yourself that way to people it reduces those barriers and you'll be surprised that it's even the men that will be pushing you forward and saying no let her be the one that has been my experience even in you know the um in lera in lecky mm. you know where i ho occupy some positions i've always been recommended by you know men who have pushed me forward and said you know she will do the work she will get it done and it has encouraged me through my political career too to step out you know before you can be a candidate people have to nominate you yeah. Yeah. and you know m a lot of times a lot of guys would, would be the one to say, Tari, you do it. You are, you are the one to go forward. But that's because I've paid my dues in that mm. sense. I've, been, I've always been available, always been accessible. They know that if they want something done, she, she will get it, it done, done, you know. So it builds that trust over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I wanted to add something to what you say. I often find that um, women think that being soft and, you know, all that vulnerability is a weakness for them. So a lot of times we tend to think, no, I have to come across like, you know, very lion, tough, very aggressive. aggressive. And I don't think that's the way to go. I honestly think that we can weaponize that softness. It can become a strategy because people naturally gravitate towards empathy. And we have that in abundance. I mean, well, most women, you know. And we can use that. We are the ones that can easily relate to the grassroots women. You understand what it means for her to go through all the trouble to feed her kids. You understand what it means for her to put two naira, three naira together to say, okay, I want to feed my family. And we, I honestly, I, because a lot of women I speak to, they go like, oh, I need to, you know, once I'm in that position, I need to be very tough so that all these people won't be looking at me like I'm too soft or somebody wants to take advantage. No, just be your natural self and just let it play out. People that would, everybody would, and I, again, I think for women, we want everybody to like us. Everybody will not like us. Everybody will not accept us. <laughs> you know, it's, I totally agree with you. I do. Um, it, it, it's even false when you try to be something you're not. You know, there are some women who by their personality type are aggressive and mm -hmm. come across strongly. That's fine yeah. if that's your personality. But there are other people who are maybe a bit reserved, a bit soft-spoken, and people would, would, would imagine that that would, that would mean you won't get the respect yeah. of people out there. But I think it's... Um, even this um, Madame Binani in mm -hmm. Adamawa, when I first of all heard or saw her that she was running, I now said, let me go and look for a video of her because I wanted to like, experience yeah. what yeah. she was like. And I was so shocked at how soft-spoken and like, very gentle, you know, mannered she is. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. She's not the stereotype you know yeah. that you described as brash aggressive and all that and it was welcoming and refreshing to me to see that because i was like she don't I, I'm, I'm glad i'm happy that she's just 
an easygoing woman mm -hmm. like every she, well she appears to be <laughs> an easygoing woman mm -hmm. like every other person you know and i think for me that's a winner just be yourself mm -hmm. be your authentic self mm -hmm. the people that will gravitate to you if you are aggressive will gravitate to yeah. you mm -hmm. the people that are gra gravitate to you if you are gentle will yes, gravitate yes, to yeah. you so just be yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay yeah so i like what you said about putting in the work right but then it's been said because i remember that there's a particular there was a particular candidate with the party who was a woman then she was also young so it wasn't even just because she was a woman now it was also because she was young she didn't get the presidential ticket she was trying to get at the time okay so what what what, what would you have to say about that um well i don't know the exact you know um no, I'm talking generally you're, now. You're so referring I mean, to, but I would thing. say, you know, I'm not of the school of thought. Uh, you were saying it earlier. I slightly have a different way of looking at it. I'm not of the school of thought of saying I would just support someone because she's a woman. No, I'm sorry. It's not that easy. No, you have to earn my respect. You have to earn my vote. You have to earn my, my you know, like every other person. I don't, I don't see things like that. I mm. won't. Yes, I may be a little bit more biased. Mm in terms of giving you more of my attention or being more sympathetic in the way I view your... But I will not automatically just vote for someone because she's a woman. I'm sorry. You have to tick the boxes. There has to be competence. I have to see your character and feel like you're somebody I can trust with leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just going to do that. So, and I don't really... I, I know, I understand the urgent need for more women to be in politics and in government, but it should be the mm -hmm. right woman. I want to ask it a question. It should be the right woman. <laughs> <laughs> These same standards that you have just said now, do you put it for men? Which okay. same standards? Because you see, people have yeah. heard oh, these yes. arguments. Oh, yes, competence and all of that. I've, had, I've heard this argument about competence, character, and all of that. I do. Uh, the crop I of leaders do. that we have today, <laughs> can you categorically say that there is competence, there is character? Some. Some it's not an abundance of them. It's not. But there is some. It's very minimal. But you see, the, the, you the know, bar so has the point, raised. So the way I'm driving with the conversation is the point I'm trying to make is that, in terms of all that criteria of competence and character and all of that, if you put all the crops of everybody together, so let the, let them all be incompetent together as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> again, we know it's true because we've tried out men for so long. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we had women in the seats of power, right? Like decision policy makers, well, we especially. Had some women in no, very I'm talking high about offices. no, I'm talking about a good number yeah. for policy makers, especially not really um, the executives. So like policy, the critical mass. Yes, the critical mass of women, especially where some policies are being crafted. There is a way a woman will craft. There is a way you would craft a policy that will be completely different from oh, how a man will craft that policy. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. but let me just step aside because that competent matter. After I said after this election, I, I don't want to know. No, but come what on. You are. The, fact that, the fact that we were disappointed by it's like uh, those um, jokes, those memes you always see on, mm -hmm. on Instagram what I ordered versus what, what I, I got. got. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's let like, us just let us just be ordering the wrong thing. It's no, true. The fact that we are disappointed doesn't mean you should give up. I would not. How do we ever, how would we ever get Achieve. what we want yeah. if yeah. we don't persist? So, so, so let me just quickly divert a bit. I want to digress a bit. I want to focus on you a little bit. Okay. Now, you ran under a party. Now, look at Binani. She ran under a very strong political party. Mm -hmm. The ruling party. It's a ruling party. Now, I want to understand the role of the party mm -hmm. for women. Because again, I see, I see that a lot of the um, smaller parties are very quick so. to give tickets and all of that, mm -hmm. you know. For, to women, you know, and all of that. They are very quick to do all of those things. But when it comes to the, the bigger parties, like the, the, the big political parties, the big political players, yeah. it's very difficult. So for her to have gotten mm -hmm. that ticket, you would know that the kind of work she must have yes, put in, course. you know, she would have matched maybe 10 men, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because she would have done 10 times yeah. what the yeah. men would have done for her to yeah. have gotten mm -hmm. that seat. Yeah. So the question I'm trying to ask is, is it wisdom anymore for women that are trying to put themselves, we want to, if we want to, I mean, start to increase our seats of power, is it wisdom for us to continue to run on the smaller parties or we should start considering, you know, the bigger players? Well, that's a question for every politician, mm. you know, uh, but speaking specifically to women, um, you know, <sighs> As a politician, generally, I don't even like to just like gender, gender, genderize it, or how do I call yeah. it? You want to be standing on a firm foundation. Look at what happened to me. You know, yes, I've run on this party before, and I have been on the ballot, but 
you know, the way the, it went because of the, I, I, I mean, INEC just decided to do what they did. But it would be, there have been candidates from even the more established parties who have been excluded. Mm. You know, we all know the presidential elections is not every party that was on the ballot yes. for that, yes. you know. So sometimes because of legal issues or whatever, it, it could happen. But I think that going forward, it is very important. But it's a two-way, it's a two-way thing. Yes, I agree with you, and I think that we should be in those more established parties because it provides a stronger platform to run on. They have more structure, this word. They have more... <laughs> well, it's, but it's a reality. Yeah. There is more structure. There is more... Of course, with INEC, it's mm -hmm. harder for INEC to mess yeah. with yeah. Their, you know, them and all of that like that. But there's also the idea of the culture that has formed within that party. And... Would, we, would it allow us to get the best woman out at the end of the day? Mm. If there is a culture of impunity or lack of internal or democracy, your turn. or what if the woman, they just even, she, what if she bought the ticket? Mm. We should still support her because she's a woman. Mm. What if she was, she, so she has a godfather or godmother, somebody mm. that just put her there, we should still support her just, we should, just because she's a woman. So those double standards yeah. kind of exist. If Madame Binani had won, um, and I mean, I was rooting for her. I would have liked her too because I thought, okay, this woman looks. Yeah. But if there is a flaw with yeah. the system, should we say, oh, let them just give her a job because she's a woman? Shouldn't the right thing be done? Shouldn't there be fair and credible elections? So I don't think we should just wish away those standards okay, because so we want to I see. I have one. <laughs> on this um, special seats being designated for women, you know, especially yes. when the, we, um, the current assembly is saying, oh, maybe we don't have seats to give, and then women are saying, okay, you know. Why don't you just create yes. more seats? What are your thoughts on that? Um, so special seats and, all, well, so are you asking me about creating more seats? More seats, about so that we can, and that's those seats are specific, for, specific, for, specific women. for women. Um, I think government is already too expensive. To do more. To do more seats. Mm. So you, the cost of governance in Nigeria yeah, is too high. Too so high. when you add more seats, that's more constituency offices, more mm. staff for allowance. the people, more allowances. Oh. So it's just going to bloat government more. But let's, let, can we start with the 35%? Mm. Let us even do that. Can we even do 30%? Let us even do 20 Let reinvent the wheel. Mm. We have said 35%. Yeah. That's a form of affirmative action. Yeah. Yeah. Let's even try with that one first. I, there's no need to have the assembly too I, bulky I agree. with mm. too many seats. Now, nah, I mean, mm. let's, do, let's work with what we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you said something about free and fair. Free and credible election. <laughs> 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 so a lot of people have accused... They said that it is impossible for political parties not to rig election. Do you believe that? That even the party that, you know, that everybody say, oh, this, this, that, they are, that all of them from top to bottom, they rig elections. Do you agree with that school of thought? Well, um, who, are, who is in political parties? Hmm. It's people like you and me, people hmm. who make decisions, who take decisions. So it's not as if the party is just one abstract institution that mm -hmm. we just rig. No, they have soldiers that they send Good out soldiers, to snatch yeah. ballot boxes. They have agents that go out to pay people, you know, to, for their votes. They have masterminds who sit down and strategize the whole thing. So this is people like you and me. So until we reach the individual people and all somehow have a change of orientation, it will not be different. The party systems will still be this, you know, intrinsically corrupt until the people change their minds. And people will never change their minds if there is mm. no if there is no consequences. Yeah. So there has the law has to be enforced. People that are caught for electoral fraud and rigging and all that, they need to be persecuted. We need to see the full wrath of the law come upon them. That's how you would dissuade other people. But if we just say it and pay lip service to it, nothing is going to change. You know, people are still going to keep on doing what they're doing. Okay. Good evening, my dear beautiful school <laughs> sisters of what I say in hashtag ways. How can we get more women into seats of power? Firstly, they have to make themselves available to contest for positions in office. Then they can be voted for. Secondly, they need encouragement. Also, me personally, I have mentioned it so many times in my previous comments that women can deliver if given the chance to. Women generally are passionate for a change. The previous government promised us change for eight years and failed to deliver. 
if a woman was there, I'm sure there will be a change. Also, men can rig themselves into power, but I don't think women will. Mm. I will personally vote a woman for the post of president. You ladies abandoned me last week. I was hey. tired of watching repeat <laughs> programs. My name is Daniel. Hello, yes. Ah, Daniel. Daniel, don't be angry. We are back. <laughs> okay, how can we get more women into the seats of power? I believe women who want to be who want to be the seat of power should be very intentional about it. Just like freedom is not given but taken, the same way women who want power should learn to wrestle for power. They should not come with the attitude of being pitied. They should come with confidence, boldness, every seat of power that every seat of power requires. Women who seek for the seat of power should do so with respect, honor, and integrity. They should learn to join any political party of their choice and work themselves up from there. We have women in different places of the world, and those women did not have two heads, but one like all the other women in the world. You see that to me, you see? Respect, honor, and, and integrity. integrity. <laughs> the men, when they did, they did have <laughs> You know what? This matter, I can't, nobody can win this argument. I say after what has happened in this general election, nobody should tell me anything. If no, but oh, seriously, we, 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 so we yes, really need worry. to marshal our strength. Yeah, we have to be strategic. But I mean, Terry, if you had one final yeah. thing to say, yeah. because now there's a lot of disappointment in the air. Mm. And like you rightly said, it's not really about the political party. It was more of INEC. Yes. So INEC has really, INEC has done a lot more damage mm -hmm. than, you know, they can even evaluate. They don't yeah. know the extent of the yeah. damage yet yeah. until, let's say, maybe 2027. They will know how far... This, this went this went right so if you had anything to say to anybody and like, i love what you said about starting now yeah. how do we be i mean how do we start being strategic i mean as a woman that is out there or anybody that wants to go that is really serious about you know yeah. getting into a seat of um, power how do we start now join a political party okay. first join a, uh, and if you're not if you're already a member of a political party i think in everything every great venture starts with you first mm -hmm. you have to decide what it is you want what is your what is the value you're trying to offer don't just come out and say i want to run for office because i'm a woman okay what value are you bringing to the table what will you be recognized for when people are having a conversation about how they want to allocate power where will your name mm. come out mm. so you have to build that value which is why you go into the party or if you, even if it's you want, not everybody can be a politician. Mm. Some people may want to give value in their community just as a private citizen like I was doing in Lera or whatever. What is the area that you want to make a contribution? If you, if you frame it that way, it will be easier for you to gravitate towards you know, that platform or where it is that you know you can find value. Mm. So I think we should first of all start with our thinking. Let us start looking, let us start thinking in terms of what can I give? What contribution can mm. I make? And what sort of opportunity should I engage with that would take me you know, to the platforms that I need to get to? So now that they say we should go to our places, I should go and do it in Nobody those said states. you should go. Don't Amen. listen to those kind of things. Nobody is asking you to go to your places. I'm going to leave those states, yo. Because I, I'm an endo girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. I think we had a fantastic, fantastic conversation. Yeah. Honestly, I just want to have a breath of fresh air going forward because I'm really tired. But thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Tari Tola. Fantastic conversation. Thank you, Chinelo and... Adiola. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles that way your Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements online, share, like, and um, watch again, share with your families and friends. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. For me, a better democracy is a democracy where women do not only have the right to vote and to, be, um, and to elect, but to be elected. We have to have that right to be elected. Don't remove Tari Taylor's name from ballot for paper next time. Okay. I will go and fight on her behalf. <laughs>so much for staying with us. I hope you enjoyed watching and getting up close and personal with me as much as I have enjoyed sharing with you. Media is a powerful tool with the ability to shift the minds of the youth in a progressive trajectory and I will continue to do my part through Waze. Thank you for watching and supporting the Waze brand and as we wind down for the year, 
please let's remember that all we need is love. Love for self, love for family, love for neighbor, for country, and for humanity. Eshe goni eku aduro ti walati January titi di isisi. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. and have a very happy holidays. Bye.